All right, let's just get this show on the road, shall we? Great to have you here. This is the Double Your Profits Workshop. Uh, my name's Greg Wilkes. I'm really pleased to have you in the room with me today. So if you're in construction and trades, you're in exactly the right place. Now, you've obviously come here today because you might be a little bit frustrated with your profit margins, or you just want to secure more profit in your business. And I get that completely. You know, I've run construction companies. I know that the, the frustrations that you can have. Let me just uh, quickly tell you a little bit about myself, if you don't know me share my screen so i need to update this headshot this is like me like 10 years ago i looked a lot younger then <laughs> but let me quickly tell you about what i do just one quick thing here if you want to take a little picture of that if you want to have a chat with me or my team just grab that qr code there and we can talk to you about your business but i've been in construction for 20 odd years uh literally you know as a as a carpenter grew up did an apprenticeship with my dad and I've grown multiple seven-figure businesses, but I've also had massive failure in construction, built a huge company and it went wrong. And I write all about that in my book. And this actually become a bestseller, wrote about what, what happened, what went wrong, and then how I got it right the second time. So if you go onto our website, we've got free copies there, just send us your email and we'll, we'll ping, a, ping a copy over to you. So as I said, yeah, uh, Amazon number one bestseller, that book that obviously really resonated with, with different people. I'm now an award-winning coach. We've got uh, tons of five-star ratings online for people that are working with us and who have worked with us in the past. And we specialize in helping businesses scale to 5 million. So generally people come to us, they might be just under a million um, and we take them from say one to, to five million, that sort of thing. So that's that's where we're at. Uh, our minimum criteria of client that we're going to take on has to be doing a minimum of 350 grand. So just, just to give you a heads up there. So that's a little bit about me. But yeah, let's just talk to you about what this workshop's about. So as you know, I've been in construction. I know the pains that come along with it. And I know there's nothing worse sometimes. Maybe you've experienced this when you go and see your accountant at the end of the year. And you sit down and you're braced for the bad news he's going to give you. And he says, Greg, do you know what? You've made 75 grand profit this year. And you think, really? 75 grand? And he goes, yeah, you've had a good year. You've made 75 grand. And you think, all right, okay. Well, I'm not seeing that in my bank account. So not quite sure where that's gone. And, uh, and then he gives you the news. And by the way, you've got a 25 grand tax bill that you've got to pay by the end of the week. And you're like, oh man, <laughs> um, I've had that before. Have, have you ever had that where you've, got a shock you know you, you're told that you've earned a lot more than what you really seem to have felt like you have you haven't really seemed to have seen that in your bank account and then you're hit with a massive tax bill and you think well where's the money i haven't got any money in my business account to pay this sort of stuff and what this workshop's really about is that we, we've seen this time and time again and this workshop is about how you can not only improve your profits, so people who've applied this have actually doubled their profits, which is incredible, but also we want you to retain more profit in your business. So it's actually in your back pocket rather than it being on, you know, on paper or you've made 75 grand. We actually want you to retain it yourself. So we're going to show you a system today that's going to help you do that. It's a proven system and it really works. Now we get mixed results with this as in when we do this workshop, it's mixed results in how this goes in for the different ones. So if you're really great with numbers and you like this sort of stuff this may this may go in straight away and you think right i've got it i understand the principle completely we get others that struggle with it a little bit what i would say to you is if we're going through this and you're struggling to, to keep up with it you can watch it again but don't worry too much just pick and choose what you can out of it because we're going to go through multiple a load of principles and you may only need to pick one or two things out of that that suit you you don't necessarily have to apply all of it so don't stress if uh, you're finding this is going over, over your head a little bit because it's quite in depth, but it's fantastic. It's an absolute game changer. So look forward to, to running it with you. So what are we talking about today? Let me just share my screen. So as we said, you probably come here because um, you might be profitable in your business, but you've got no cash and, and that's frustrating. So we're going to show you a system which is called Profit First. And I'm not clever enough to come up with this system. This isn't my system at all. But what I have done is I've tweaked it for the UK market. Um, we've got a book here by Mike McCallavich. He's the original founder of this, this methodology, Profit First. So that the first principle comes from this, what, what Mike did. Now, Mike's not in trades at all. He's not in construction. So he did this book just for you know general everyday business. Now, you know as well as I do that 
construction is in the general business, is it? <laughs> construction is a completely different beast. We're dealing with different things. So this workshop is an amalgamation of not only Mike's book, but Sean Van Dyke also did a fantastic book, but it's actually US, this book, Sean Van Dyke's. So it's a combination of these two and me tweaking it completely for the UK market because I've read both of these and studied them in detail. And then when we're actually trying to help our clients apply this, we thought, actually, this needs tweaking a little bit. So I tweaked it, revamped it all. And what you're going to hear today is a little bit of a revamp on it. But the principles come from this. So if you want to go and buy these books, I highly recommend you start with Mike's book. First of all, it's absolutely fantastic. But maybe this workshop will, will give you what you need. So what we want to first look at is the principles around accounting and why it's generally wrong. So at the moment, you might be doing what we call transaction accounting. Yeah. So if you look at your profit and loss account, what we do with transaction accounting is we invoice a load of money out to a client and that will show us our you know, total income. But you may not actually have that as cash. You know, you may be waiting 30, 60 days potentially for that, but it's still sitting there on your profit and losses that you've invoiced it. And then obviously you've got other bills and whatever that comes in, receipts that come in and that all gets put on your PL. So this is transaction accounting and this is pretty much what our accountants will use and they will submit to HMRC or you know whoever the, the tax person is if you come if you listen to this in the US whoever they are in your area now <clears throat> that's transaction accounting what we used to but where we where we sometimes miss things is this cash flow accounting so can we account for cash flow the actual you know the 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 cadence of cash that's coming in and out of the business so it's a transaction accounting system that that you're generally doing and and that makes sense because that's how accountants teach it in the in you know britain us australia that's that's generally how we do things this system's slightly different we're going to show you how to do both but more of the focus is is, is going to be on the cash flow itself because the cash flow is the lifeblood of a business and that's how stress you know that's where you get your stress from is when there isn't enough cash you might it's fair enough if you're owed it but it's no good if you're owed it you want it in your account don't you so we're going to look at this system now now the second principle we're going to look at today is this here so traditional accounting follows this formula it follows the formula of sales minus your expenses equals profit yeah that's why profit is always at the bottom of a PL report so that that's that's how we traditionally do accounting don't we so you probably do your accounting that way sales minus all your expenses gives you your profit at the end Profit first, this entire system has a completely brand new way of thinking about this, and it flips this equation on its head. And it's quite interesting. As, as we go through it, you'll start to see why. It does this instead. It does your sales minus your profit, then equals what you should be spending on your expenses. So that flips it around a little bit. And I'll explain that as we go through why we want to do that. And as you can see, this is why it's called profit first because the profit comes before your expenses. You take profit out of the business before the expenses are paid. And we're going to show you how you can do that. So it's, it's a really incredible way of thinking about it. So just leave that there for a second, that principle. So that's principle number two. The third principle that Profit First is based on is envelopes. So maybe your, your grandmother used envelopes in business when, that's sorry, in business, in, in life. You know, uh, sometimes grandmas, what they did was, they would get, you know, a load of money, cash that come in, and then they would use an envelope. That would be the rent. That would be the heating bill. That would be the food. Um, and that's how people did it back then. Now, we're going to be using a similar system, but we're going to be using digital envelopes in this system. So we're going to get our main income that comes in, and then it's going to be distributed out into what we call digital envelopes. And we'll show you how to do that and how to get that split right. So that, that just flips that on its head. The good thing now is a lot of banking systems are actually coming around to this being a really good way of working and dealing with cash. So if you want to use some banks and you want some ideas, Starling Bank and Monza do have these envelopes, these saving envelopes, or um, I think uh, Starling calls it spaces. So you can create free accounts free spaces, and then you can just dis distribute your money into these spaces as and when needed. But we're, we're going to go, go into that into more detail about why you need to do that. So that's the third principle. The fourth principle is that when your money comes in, all your money comes into one main account, is that it's going to be distributed 
into all these other accounts. So that's that's what you need to, to bear in mind there. Sorry, that's, that's the third principle. This is back onto the envelopes again. The fourth principle is this. We're going to cut the fat in the business. So what we've got to be careful on is when we cut our costs in business and when we analyze that, we want to cut the fat and not the muscle. And sometimes people pick the wrong thing to cut. So we'll show you or we'll help you see what, what's fat and what's muscle in business. And the last thing we're going to look at, the principle, is that you pay your best employee first. Who's the best employee? Well, it's you. <laughs> You're the best employee because you probably do most of what's going on in the business. You know, you probably wear many hats, finance, operations, HR, all, all of it you're doing. So you're the best employee. So the principle is we've got to pay you first and we're going to show you how you can do that. So they're the five principles that we're going to be looking at. But one of the first things we need to do is understand your current position in business. How does your business currently run? And what Profit First does is it uses what's called an instant assessment. So if you went onto the website of uh, Profit First, you would get this instant assessment. So let's imagine, I'm just going to do, a, a, say, a standard company that, that, that might typically come and work for us. Let's imagine you, you are at 1 million total revenue. Yeah. So you, you bring in a million a year. Let's, let's say this is excluding VAT, by the way. So you bring a million pounds in revenue in a year. Now, the next box we have to just work out is what do we generally spend on materials and subcontractors? Now, hopefully you know what your gross profit margins are in business, what you generally spend. But I'm hoping if you do know that, we can put that figure in. So let's imagine you're running at, say, a 30% gross profit margin. Let's keep the figures nice and simple. That would mean you would spend 700K on materials and subcontractors or labor as a business. Right. So that's that's your spend. What you're left with after that is what profit first calls your real revenue. And that is simply 300K. Yeah. So if we if we've got a million revenue, we spend 700,000 on materials. Our real revenue is 300,000 pound. And this is the figure that we base everything off of. And I'll show you this why. So let's imagine how you split that 300K that you're you're left with. Now, you may have a profit figure. I'm just going to put a, a line through this profit because most people will run limited companies and they won't have a lot of profit left in a business. Let's just presume that's your situation. They draw it all out as their wages. So let's imagine you don't have any profit in the business, but you do have, let's say, just put a nice easy figure, 50K owner's compensation. So you pay yourself 50 grand a year, but there's no profit left in the business. Let's say you pay the tax man 20K for all the tax. We're not, not including that in this. This is just uh, uh, income tax and uh, corporation tax. So that leaves you with your operating expenditures left, which which comes out of this, this 300K. So in this, in this case, it's going to be 230K a year that you're going to spend on your overheads. All right. So that's, that's just a, a quick instant assessment. Now, in Profit First, they actually have this is a bit better. They've actually got this on an Excel spreadsheet. So I'm just going to switch over to share my screen and show you this Excel spreadsheet. There you go. Hopefully, yeah, you can see that. So I'm just going to fill out those same figures again. Yeah. So we said here in our spreadsheet that we had a million turnover. We spent 700,000 on subcontractors, which left us real profit of 300 grand. We said we had no net profit. But our owner's compensation or our owner's salary, founder salary is 50 grand. And we spend, say, 20 grand on tax. All right. So hopefully everything's, everyone's falling, following along with this. So what that means is uh, we've got some percentages that we're, we're currently spending in business. Now, this is our current percentages in column G. We're currently spending 5% of our total revenue on owner's compensation, we're spending 2% on tax and we're spending 23% on our operating expenses. All right, that's the first thing we need to bear in mind. Now, what we don't know is these are the percentages that we're currently spending, but is that good or is that bad? <laughs> now, what should we be spending every month on our, on our staff? So the good thing is Profit First has already worked all this out for us. They have given us what they call target allocation percentages. So they know what businesses should be doing each year in net profit, in owner compensation, in tax and operating expenses. Now, we were at this mark, weren't we? 
the the one million five hundred k to to one million mark, and it gives us our profit figures percentages here that we need. We want in an ideal world we want to be aiming for twenty five percent net, twenty percent owners uh, compensation, fifteen percent tax, and forty percent in operating expenses. Yeah. So let's just go back to our spreadsheet and let's start putting some of those figures in and see what that does for us. In fact, they're already in there. So we said, yeah, 25% net profit, 20% owner's compensation, 15% tax, and 40% is left for your operating expenses, right? So that's that's all in our spreadsheet now. Now, what that does for us is it gives us a number. So here's our numbers, what this is telling us it be. So what we're looking for is in an ideal world, at the end of the year, we're looking for the owner to receive £60,000 in a salary, but he's got £75,000 left in profit. Yeah. So in, in the real world, if you're going to take that money, that, that 75 grand, you're going to be left with, a, you're, you're going to be earning 135000 as a business owner on a million pound revenue. So this is, this is an, in an ideal scenario. Which which works and they and they've checked you know that the, the most companies do and, and I can verify because our clients do this you can easily do that so you're looking to get seven sixty plus seventy five that's what you would receive now the reason they split this up is because it's really important that the owner doesn't draw too much out of the business at once so what they'd rather do is bring the owner's compensation down to the 60 grand and leave 75 grand in in profit that you'll be able to use in different ways so whether that comes to you or you use it another way that that's fine so we're, we're just not running the business bare they uh, allow for 45 grand in tax which they, they think is average that you'd spend on tax and that leaves you your operating expenses of 120k so now we've got our target this is what we need to do each year now the good thing is is this spreadsheet then tells you what's happening and a fix so what this is telling us is at the moment, we need to increase the amount of profit that we're taking in business. Remember, we said we're taking zero amount of profit. Well, we need to increase that. We need to increase the owner's compensation to 60K. We need to increase how much we're putting away for tax, but we need to decrease the amount we're spending on overheads. So the good thing about this assessment is that in an instant, you will instantly know where you're at you'll instantly see where is it going wrong for me? Am I spending too much on overheads? Am I you know, taking too much money out as an owner? Um, and when, once you do that, you can see what you're, what you're left with. And sometimes this is just a complete eye opener for people. And they're like, oh, wow, I'm a, I'm a million miles away from where I should be. Or you, you may only have a few little tweaks to make. So that, that's the first thing. We need to understand our position. And then we need to review the TAPs, the target allocation percentages, the ideal allocation percentages. And then we need to look at the difference and we need to fix it. So just having a look at this for you, we haven't really got time for you to do this. If, if uh, I was doing this with my clients, we'd spend a lot of time doing it for each one individually. But just on this workshop today, I'm just going to go through the example. What we're seeing here is um, this is the, where we need to get to. So currently we've got 0% allocated for tax, uh, for, for net profit, because we said we're not putting anything away for net profit, but we need to get that to 7.5%. Uh, we're putting, we're taking 5% out for our wages, but we want to get that to 6%. So it's not much of a raise. We're putting 2% away for tax, but we need up to 4.5%. And our operating expenses are currently running at 23%, but we need to get that down to 12. So that's a big drop, isn't it? That needs to come down. So we're spending way too much on our overheads and that needs to come down to 12. And if we can do that, you're going to be left with this sort of profit at the end of the year, the uh, 75, 60K and 75K. And that's how an efficient business will run. So the first thing to, to, to really do is get yourself this formula worked out watch this again on replay and start working out where you need to be now what this does if you look there's one column here we haven't touched on this is column h it talks about your day one progress so what we're encouraged to do in the book is rather than go for this all at once because sometimes it can cause too much strain on the business if you implement this immediately we're encouraged to make just a one percent change immediately on day one and that 1% change is going to increase every quarter. 
So currently we're putting, we, we've got zero allocated for net profit, but we're just going to do 1% of our, our total revenue of a million. We're going to put that away every month. So that might not seem like a lot, just 1%, but eventually we're going to get that up to 7.5% every month. So that's interesting, just thinking about how we're going to do that. And you're going to do the same with the others. We're currently taking five. We're going to move that to six. The tax is going to move up and we're slowly going to decrease the operating expenses. What you need to bear in mind with the operating expenses, because we're putting these up 1% each, we actually have to make a 3% cut on our operating expenses on day one. But 3% doesn't sound like a lot, does it? <laughs> you know, if you're spending 10 grand a month and you've just got to cut 3% of that, it's not so painful. So this is why we do it that way to, to just gradually ease you into this, this strategy. So I know that that was really fast and that may have gone over some, you know, some of your heads. So I know we've literally done that in 20 minutes. We spend a lot of time running through this principle. We're just giving you the, the outline of it at the moment. So, okay. So you've got, you've got it sort of there. And when you watch it on record and you're actually doing it for yourself, you'll start to, to really understand this, but let's move on to the next bit. What's, what's now needed. So what we need to do, let's just get my thing allocated. There we go. It's this page here we want. So what we need to do now is think about our bank accounts and how we start doing this. So on my iPad here, you'll notice how this works in principle is we talked about envelopes, didn't we? What we need to do with envelopes. Now, what happens is you currently probably have a main account that all your money comes into, a big business account. So all your money drops into there. And the principle of profit first is now we've set those percentages, we're going to drop them into all the different accounts. So every time you get money coming into here, well, not every time, I'll show you the cadence of it in a minute. But when money comes into here, it then gets distributed to all the other accounts, right? So it never stays in the main account. And that's a good thing because how many times sometimes you get, you know, especially in construction, you get like 20 grand here and 50 grand payment there. All of a sudden you think you're, you're absolutely rich, don't you? You think, oh, I've got loads of money. And then it goes, doesn't it? You've got to start paying your suppliers and whatever else. And you think, oh man, I've got, got nothing left. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start, you're going to get your main account and then you're going to distribute it into these envelopes. So you're going to, I'll explain the VAT in a second, but you're going to put some into the VAT. You're going to put your owner's compensation in. Now we said the owner's compensation was 6%. So you're going to put 6%. Let's imagine you've got 10 grand that come in. You're going to put 6% of that into your owner's comp. So that'd be 600 quid. You're going to put your profit away, which we said on day one turns into 1%. So that doesn't sound like a lot, but that's going to be a hundred pound. You're going to put your tax away, which we said was 3% on day one. So that's going to be 300 quid. I know you're going to be dealing with much bigger figures than this. You, you, you know, if you've got hundred grand coming in, obviously add, a, add another zero to all these. You're going to put your CS, CIS money away, which is nice and easy to work out because you'll know exactly what you need to put away for CIS, depending on what you've paid your subbies. And then what you're left with is your operating expenses. Now that is going to be everything else. Yeah. Or ev everything else that's not in there is going to go into your operating expenses and that will cover your, your subcontractors your labor your materials and all your overheads will sit in there so that's how you distribute now we've set the targets we've already set the targets and you're going to need to open all these bank accounts so what i'd encourage you to do if you're going to do this system is go and open a bank account with someone like stalin or monza or someone like that the problem is with the mainstream banks like hsbc and you know lloyds and different ones sometimes it's actually difficult to get those extra bank accounts open whereas the new banks the new digital banks like starlin you can just open as many spaces as you need and put that money away so you can line them up and then you can name them all and they're all there and they're sitting there so that's what i encourage you to do first is go and open those bank accounts and set your initial targets which comes from this initial assessment that we've just done so once we've set the targets and we've got, we know what we're distributing each month into these accounts, the next thing we need to do is talk about cutting the fat in business. Just let me know in the chat, do you feel like you're running like a really lean business or do you think you're carrying a bit of fat? And what we mean by fat is subscriptions that you no longer need. You know, maybe that office is sitting there that you've realized in COVID that, you know, you didn't use it anyway and everyone's working remotely. And maybe you've got vans that aren't being utilized properly that you don't need. 
All of this is potentially fat in the business. But what we want to do, what's really important is we start thinking about where that fat is in the business. And some of the best things you can do is go through your bank account or go through your profit and loss if, if needed and just start highlighting all these things that you're currently paying out for that are coming out every single month. And you'll see things there. You'll see subscriptions there and you think, why am I paying that? I don't need that anymore. And have a look at what you what you need and what you don't need. What's, what's really important when we do this is what some people make the mistake of doing is when they're trying to cut down to this operating expenditure that they now need, this percentages, the mistake some people make is they cut the muscle. Now, what do we mean by that? Why, why do you not want to cut the muscle? Well, we know, don't we? Obviously, you want, to, you want to be packing as much muscle as you can in business. But what we don't want to do is we don't want to cut things that make us stronger. So sometimes people might look and think, oh, I need to cut my ad spend down. Well, actually, not necessarily. If your ad spend is winning you work, that's making you stronger as a business. You don't cut your ad spend. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you've got a, an accountant or, or a coach or something like that, and you think, oh, I'm going to get rid of the accountant, he's rubbish. But actually, if they're, if they're helping you grow the business and they're making you strong, then no, you don't cut that. So you need to be really disciplined in this and don't cut muscle just for the sake of cutting expenses. You just cut the excess away and you do it slowly we don't we don't do it all at once so that's the principle of, of cutting the fat the next thing we need to look at is this principle of the rhythm of how often we start doing this so what is the rhythm in when we should be doing it because obviously you look at this and you think well hold on i get paid like on a monday and then i get a payment in the thursday and the friday have i literally got to be going in and working this out constantly well no what they, what they teach us in this, this profit first methodology is that we do it twice a month. So let's imagine we do it on the 10th and the 25th of every month. You can pick what dates they're going to be, but you only do it twice. And this is the sort of rhythm that's going to happen. Your money's going to come in and it's just going to sit there in that main account. And then on the 10th of the month or the 25th or both, you're going to start shifting your money around. So the first thing you're going to do is shift all the VAT into the VAT account. We must make sure the VAT is there and uh, you don't have to stress about it. So, excuse me. So the, the way you would know how much VAT you owe is you would look at zero. If you look on your zero balance sheet or a QuickBooks balance sheet, it will tell you where your VAT is at currently for that, for that day. Um, because if you're keeping your accounts up to date and you're submitting all your receipts, it's already working out how much VAT you've invoiced and how much VAT you're claiming on your receipts. So it is going to vary a bit when the accountant uh, gets hold of it and actually reconciles it at the end of the three months. But if you are entering things regularly into zero, this will have your VAT amount that you should be putting away. If you don't know, you're going to have to guess it, but put, put the VAT away that should be going away. Now, that's the VAT and we leave that there. Then you start distributing into all your other accounts, CIS. Again, CIS you can use from zero, the balance sheet on zero. You're going to put your owner's compensation away, your profit, your tax, and your operating expenses. So all that happens on the 10th of the month. It all now gets distributed. And now there is zero left in your money in account, right? So nothing in there at all. Now we think, right, what are our expenses? The good thing is out of these spaces and envelopes, people like like banks like Starlin, they'll actually let you pay out of a different account. So what we want is we want our operating expenses to come out of the OPEX account. Your operating expenses come out of here. And that's where you're going to pay all your overheads, all your subbies, and all your materials are going to come out of this. Your tax is all put away. Your profit in the business is put away. Your money's there, ready for you to take. And that's all happened on the 10th. Now, all of these buckets below you, all these envelopes are now full of money, but your main account is at zero. Now, this is really good because what this does for you psychologically is it stops you going to spend it because you know it's already allocated. So you, you don't think you're rich all of a sudden. So the money's not there anymore. And you, you now have money put aside. So you know that your VAT's covered. You know that you've got your tax put away. Um, and that's a big stress relief because there's nothing worse than getting that big VAT bill in and thinking, oh man, I just haven't got it. I haven't got it there. So what some people do to make it even stricter is they'll actually use different bank accounts that they can't get access to. So you could do that if you want. So some people are like, well, we'll get a, a bank account set up in a different bank 
they distribute the money over to there and then they literally won't touch it. They won't even have a card. They'll actually have to physically go into the bank to get it. So if you want to do that, you can do if you've got no discipline, but um, hopefully you can <laughs> control what you're doing. So once that money's in on the 10th and the 25th, you then just distribute it out. You pay your CRS monthly, you pay your VAT, any excess that's left out of the VAT. So say, let's imagine you put 10 grand away for VAT and you only had a nine grand bill by the time your accountant did anything with it. You can send any excess into the profit account. All right, so get rid of it and put it in there. The owner's compensation gets distributed straight to the owner. So you get paid your wages, the profit and the tax get put into, a, they call it a no temptation account. So you can even leave it where it is or you can put it in an account that you can't touch. And then the OPEX, you pay all your subbies and overheads. So now all the money has been distributed out. The only one that's got money left now at the end of the month is your profit and tax. And what we do with this is the tax will obviously never be touched until you pay your tax bill. And then once the tax is paid, if there's anything left, you can distribute it to the owner. But out of the profit account, what we're encouraged to do is every three months, you take 50% of that profit, whatever's been built up in there. And then you distribute it to yourself. Only 50%. And you leave 50% to accumulate for a rainy day. So over time, that's really going to start building up. And you know that you're going to have money left in the business if you're ever in trouble. So a nice, simple strategy. But can you can you see how this works? And like I said, if, if some of this has gone over your head, just get the principle of it. If, if you only did the envelopes, you would be doing well. Yeah, so just, just do that. If you're going to get one thing out of it, just do your envelopes or just cut the fat. You know, if you've got fat in the business, just cut the fat and that's going to help. So what actually happens if your business is currently in debt? Because it will massively impact these figures. If you're in debt, you know, you think, well, how am I going to get profit out of a business if, if I'm actually in debt anyway? I might owe a big bounce back loan or whatever, you know, HMRC money from when COVID was difficult. And that's the reality for, for many. Well, have a quick look at this. This is the, the profit first method to, to get rid of debt. So what happens is, Remember, we've got a profit account that's accumulating. So that profit account, that every three months, we talked about that being distributed. Remember, we said 50% goes to the owner and 50% is left for a rainy day. Well, if we're in debt, what we do is we pay 99% of that money to the smallest debt first. Now, you might think, well, that doesn't make sense. Surely you'd pay off the debt with the most interest first. And yeah, in a in you know, if we're, if we're talking, yeah, like the accountant way, yeah, you would do that. You pay off the highest interest first. But often debt is psychological. And the principle behind this is what it believes is there's going to be a little bit of effect with this. So once the smallest debt's paid off, let's imagine you were paying £50 a month off for small debt. Now you've, you've paid that £50 off. You now get that extra £50. And now you continue to pay the next smallest debt off. And all of a sudden, it starts building up as a, of a bit of a snowball. And now you've got a lot of money left and it starts taking big, big chunks out of your main debt. So this is the this is the snowball method of paying off your debt. So instead of taking profit out of the business for yourself, you then use it to pay the debt off first. But one thing we do do, it does encourage us in the book to distribute at least 1% to the owner because you're working hard and it's nice to just get, I mean, 1% isn't a lot, but it gives you a just a psychological reward. You think, yeah, I've, that's handy. I've just got a grand there or whatever, whatever it's going to be. And, and, you, and you're encouraged to just go and reward yourself and enjoy that and, and spend that how, how you see fit for working so hard. So that's that's just the principle behind, behind debt. The other thing we see too, a little bit of a problem with this when people start trying to implement it is that the owner's compensation is too high. So we spoke about in this, let's go back to our spreadsheet here. We spoke about in our spreadsheet that the owner's compensation is currently 50 grand, but sometimes we see it where, oh, actually the owner's taken out a hundred grand a year and they've got to decrease that salary. And that gets a little bit painful because they, you know, they want to do that and they want to get the profit out of the business um, and it can all go wrong. So You've just got to think about yourself, you know, what you should be compensating yourself. You know, if you're a 500 grand a year business, you can't be taking out, you know, 100, 150 grand as profit out of the business. You've got to accept reality. If you want to take big money like that, you need to expand and scale your company. And um, I always say as a good benchmark, uh, you should be earning around 15% net profit as a company. So if you're a million pound a year, we would want to see you and we're doing this 
all day long in our mastermind with our clients, we'd want to see you at 150 grand plus profit. So that, that might give you a bit of a benchmark if you can run it at around 15%. So if you're at 500 grand, you should only be taking 75 grand a year maximum. And if you're taking more than that, you're probably putting too much strain. So, so you've either got to cut your compensation down for this to work, or you've got to amend your lifestyle a little bit to, you know, to, to, to fit in with this. So that's, that's something to think about too. So there's, there's, a, there's a fair bit there that we've, that we've run through. So we know that there are five keys to, to scaling businesses successfully. And that is that you need to have the right plan in place. You need to be able to attract the right clients to you. You then need to convert them. You then need to be able to deliver the right way. And then you can start scaling. But Pete, we've only looked at one small piece here, which is the money side. Yeah, just one small area of this. But there's so much more in business that you need to do in order to secure those profits and, and make that money. So, you know, if this is resonating with you and you think, yeah, do you know what? I would love to implement this strategy, but I know there's other areas that I've got to deal with in business at the moment. I really encourage you to book in a, uh, a scale session with us. Um, we can show you all the other strategies that we've got in your business to, to help you do that. So that's there. Um, that's what we do as uh, as business. Um, the other thing I just wanted to briefly show you is what we do as a company as part of our coaching. So we know that, as we said, you need to plan, attract, convert, deliver, and scale if you want to be highly successful as a business owner. And we've got a clear roadmap of how we take businesses from 500K all the way down to 5 million. And we've got a roadmap of how we do that. So not necessarily saying you have to do this roadmap in order, but you need to pick what's right for you at the right time. And what we generally know is there's no point focusing on some of your advanced tasks down here if we haven't got some of these basics in place. But we help you move through this roadmap and keep you nice and accountable. So you might be looking at that and think, yeah, I'm doing that, doing that. Well, that's great. You don't have to work on that stuff. And we'd move on to some other stuff. But we've got a clear strategy of how we get you there. And uh, we feel that's really important. The way we do that is we offer a mastermind course. I'll just quickly explain this course to you and, and what it is we offer here. Uh, ignore this price at the bottom for now, but we're just going to show you some of the value and what we do in this course. So one of the first things we do is we give you 12 months access to our mastermind training. Every month we have a live Zoom training on all different subjects. This month's all about Facebook ads, uh, sorry, uh, Google ads, and how you can uh, leverage Google to get more leads. We might be talking about how you can use LinkedIn or how to run the perfect sites, how to use Profit First, all these different strategies. We train you every month with something that's relevant to construction. The good thing is we've been doing this for a few years now, and we've got a ton of training videos and a whole back catalog. So any subject that you think you need covered, whether that's operate operations and systems and uh, how to find more time in your business or how to stop firefighting, how to hire people, how to run your teams. All of that is in our back catalog of training videos that you can go and binge watch anytime you need. We give you access to a private community group if you need it. And uh, that private community group, everything that's said in there stays in there. We've got a ton of brilliant business owners in there. We also give you template SOPs and resources. So SOPs stand for your standard operating procedures. And as a business, we want you building out your builder's Bible. So how are things run in your business? We give you all the template SOPs so you can run like a really smooth uh, operation. You can just go, go in there and just download all of those. So although we feel that group training is absolutely crucial, and the good thing about group training is that you're in a group where you're sitting there with people that have already been there and done it. So sometimes, you know, if you're a business that's at 500K or a million pounds, you're sitting in a group where some are like you, but others have been there and done it, and they're at three, four, five million pounds. Group training is awesome because there's more power in many brains than just my own. And people can often come up with better ideas than what I have. But although we have group, we also believe you need one-to-one -one time. One-to-one -one time is really crucial because we need to make it bespoke for you and your business. So we set you KPIs, key performance indicators, targets that we want specifically for your business. And we give you a one-to-one -one game plan session. So we get you massive wins when you first come on board and we really customize it for you and make it bespoke. As we said, I'm obsessed with numbers and profit. So we do these two things. We put you on a special PL tracking tool. You don't have to do profit first in our system, but one thing we are doing is we are tracking your profit every single month. We want to know what you're earning. And if we see any red flags, 
that are coming up and we think right you're not quite going to hit target we'll we'll dive in and fix it early rather than wait until the end of the year till you meet your account and you, you're all fed up we fix it early and people are absolutely smashing it because they're tracking their targets and we're tracking it and you're tracking it we also give you access to our accountant coach in the group he's a chartered accountant specialist in construction he gives you a review every quarter he can dive into your zero or your quickbooks help you see what's potentially not working or working in there and uh, that's really valuable too Every week you can come and talk to us. We give you live weekly Q&A calls. So you can come on every week, tell us what you're currently suffering, you know, difficulties you're, you're going through, any help you need. Uh, but also it's not just about getting Q&A and, and getting our advice. There are also accountability sessions. And sometimes we find that we really work well with account accountability. If you've ever been down, tried to lose a bit of weight and you've gone down the gym, sometimes just having that PT for eight weeks or 12 weeks just gives you the accountability to turn up and get that workout done and it's no different in business when you've got accountability all of a sudden you just see that you start getting things done and uh, that can be really powerful and push you much harder than what you could have pushed yourself you can't see these ones I'm just my head's in the way we also have a yeah, let's go that way we have a business development project tracking tool so we track everything you're working on we give you unlimited access to us with messaging and video messaging. So we can send messages back and forth if uh, you don't necessarily want to be on the calls. And we also give you emergency one-to-ones. We call them 20s if there's ever, if you're ever in the red. So let's imagine there's a big contract issue you've got to deal with and you need to talk to someone urgently or there's been a big accident on site and you need to talk to someone. We're there for you in an emergency if you need, if you need a one-to-one -one on us. So tons of support that we offer here as part of our coaching program. But we feel that that's not enough. Although you get all of this, we also feel you need some tools in order to help you achieve this successfully. So here's some of the tools we give you for free. We give you 12 months access to our cost tracker program. So cost tracker is a project management suite. You can um, run all your, your jobs, track all the costs of your, your projects. So, you know, a uh, push of a button, exactly how much you've made on each job. Uh, you guys can go down to Travis and Wix and wherever else they can purchase something and it live updates the system. <coughs> you can track all your workers on it. So it geo tags them. So it knows where they're working. Really, really powerful tool here. Uh, does lots more than that. We also give you access to what we call our flow build CRM system. Now, if you, I don't know if you use a CRM system or not, but with the amount of leads that we're going to show you how to get and the amount of sales leads, we need you to be able to track these. We need you to be able to nurture these clients. So what we have here is a system where it does all like automated emails while you're slipping. Emails can be going out potentially to people, automated SMS messaging, all your social media posts, and that can go out from here really really powerful tool we give you that included in the program too and of course we give you software training and support for all of this now we have valued all of this to a yearly value of forty thousand pounds we feel that we give you a ton of value to get that but you don't have to pay that fee <laughs> that's 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 what we value it at but you know that'd be a difficult pill for for a lot to swallow so we give you all of that now before i just show you what the price is i just want you to quickly think what is it worth to you if, if you come on and you've got some coaching and we give you all the tools and whatever else, let's imagine you're at 500 grand and you get to a million, what would you pay to do that? Or if you're at a million and we got you to 2 million, what would you pay for that? What would that be worth to you every single month with all this training and support? Well, the cost is just 1,200 pounds a month, 1,200 pounds a month, and you get all of that. So we'd love to talk to you to see if you qualify. Not everyone qualifies. We only work with certain clients and we'd love to talk to you to see if you qualify and how we can help your business. We on so we can scale. And it's not just about scaling for scaling's sake. We go for the three things. We want to give the business owner more time, more freedom and more money. They're the three things we're going for. So some people, it isn't about scaling. It's actually, I just want to get a bit more time back to spend with my family or I'm really disorganized. I, you know, I want to get the systems and processes in place. We help you do all of that. And in a year's time, you'll have a completely different business. Um, and one thing I will just say is I've, I've gone into a ton of detail into this, but just bear in mind, this is just touching the surface. We go into much more detail in our mastermind community because we've got much, much more time and we can make it bespoke for you. So just, just bear that in mind.